Hello everybody, welcome back to Gibbous, a Cthulhu adventure. Ah, uh, well, I think I have a suspicion, and that is this will probably be the, the final episode. I still don't know what's going on with Kitty, she's still stuck over there. Uh, I don't know if it's because I picked the wrong one or what. Maybe that spells an alternative ending. I really don't know for sure. But so far, everything has been very linear in this game, which is fine for me. It's an adventure. It's a story. Ah, Whoa. so. I did not expect this here. What in heaven's name is this place? How can all this be here? Huge porthole, central open book, earth and moon apparatus. All these symbols, these uh, alien symbols, shelves full of framed pictures. Um, Leftmost open book, uh, that means there's probably one on the other side. Um, well, we're right here, so let's look at the book. It's a book about ancient folk tales. It's open at Transylvania, Romania. Huh. Well, I have a feeling the other ones are going to be Fishmouth and, um... Whatever the other place was, uh... This page describes the Muara and the Zormi. Weird. This next page is about the castle and I think Vlad's ancestors and the masks. This can't be a coincidence. Mm hmm. It's a book about ancient folk tales. It's open at. Okay. Uh, same stuff. Frame pictures. This is straight up bizarre. There are framed pictures of some objects I've come across ever since this whole adventure began, like the exploding package and Priscilla's doll but also of others that I don't recognize. These other objects vary from just unusual to ancient? What's the point of all this? Who the heck could this strange place belong to? I'm leaving everything as it is. Okay, good idea. Looks like there used to be pictures in these, but they're gone. Huh. Looking closer, there's a lot of wear and tear. Like they've seen a lot of different pictures come and go. Who put all of this here? Who lives here? Could it be? Yes, it could. I'm leaving everything as it is. Ha ha ha. Okay. Um, Necronomicon crystal sign. Frame picture of an unusual crystal. I don't recall ever seeing this before. Oh, but Don has seen it. Maybe it's the stone from the stars that gave Don his mark, but there's really no way of knowing. Yeah, it's definitely the trapezohedron Weird. or trapezoidhedron. I'm leaving. This looks just like Olmstein's sign, except there's a crazy amount of lines connecting tens and tens of dots all over the place can't really look at it can this mean detail. that there are more than one signs Holmstein I can't wait for you to answer all my questions okay Necronomicon you know what that is <laughs> why it's framed and on display that's a different story why would these three pictures be displayed more prominently than the others I'm sick of looking at it. Because they are important. I'm leaving everything as it is. If you wish, Buzz. Whoa. The title of the book is A Storm Over Fishmouth. What? Should I look deeper into this? Of course. While on an antiquarian tour of an isolated fishing village called Fishmouth, a man called Robert Olmstein has an unexpected revelation. Olmstein? Robert Olmstein? What does this mean? That Bob Olmstein is a part of the story, buddy. Let's see what this page says. It had all started with the strange fishiness of the local populace, but now it was clear. 
There was more, so much more to this. It was as if whispers of dark ancient legends, revelations of unfathomable ancestry, madcap globetrotting adventurers, and the ever-present threat of slumbering horror, were all coming together into one blood-red line under the watchful eye of the Necronomicon. Holy hardcover hermetical history, I've stumbled onto something big! I'll just keep reading, I guess. These stories are too dark and beautiful not to come to life, uttered Olmstein with an enigmatic smile. Even the one ending with this world's complete destruction? There is no story if there is nothing at stake, came Olmstein's answer. The roles are set, the actors will come and go, and we will be here, watching. And controlling it? Sometimes, when the time is right. Why not make it always? Always? Where is the fun in that? And he let go of the book, watching it drop in slow motion into the crowd below. The end. Hmm. Whoa. The t Whoa, okay. Hmm. I... <clears throat> so. Um. There's a right book. And let's look at the porthole. Huge porthole looking out into a greenish abyss. There's something off about it, though. It's green? It's like it's shimmering every once in a while. I'm getting a very strange vibe from it. Oh. That is a puzzle. It's the Earth, with a moon on a rotating arm attached to it. Wait a minute, what the...? There's long red string hanging from the moon like it was cut or something. And I'm seeing dozens of shorter threads hanging from places all over the globe. The greenish light coming in from the portal is only illuminating three quarters of the moon. It's the... wait a... I'm leaving everything as it is. Hmm. Well, we'll have to figure out this porthole. Uh... This book is called The Case of Basil Dexter Kerwin. Basil Kerwin, a bookish nobody counting the days away behind his office desk, unveils a century-spanning relationship between himself and a wizard named Corvinus, and tries to avoid slowly transforming into something he detests. The pages are all crossed out and scratched over, it's hard to make out anything more. That's maybe your father. Cor Corvinus? Oh no, I'm starting to feel faint. I've had enough. I'd better move on. This book bas on it the page. Okay. Let's look at this again. Let's see what Oh. Oh. You can see it's not a puzzle. Well, guess we'll uh, leave that one at the donk at the uh, rosy. Uh, I don't know who these are. These are the rolls the people carry. That's got to be another time when it's happened, right? A carrier... Okay. And different symbols and shapes and such. These are past people in history who have been...
part of the uh, the roles, the actors, as so as it's so called. Here we go. And there we are. So that's the Haunter's Mark. That's the Necronomicon. That is the well. I don't know. Protector? I don't know. And okay. Alright, and the spotlight. Ohm steady. Got an achievement for being ohm steady. Uh hmm. The full moon, the gibbous, the crescent, the new moon. I'm guessing this is the one that's going to be important. Okay. Uh, we're missing the top right corner and the bottom left corner. Okay, that probably will come in handy. I mean, here's your gibbous, so I'm guessing that will have something to do with uh, a puzzle later on, maybe. So that wasn't a puzzle, that was just information. Alright, let's head I'm right in. Here. Dawn and peace need me. What about Goodbye, Kitty? Goodbye, strange room. <laughs> He's forgotten about Kitty. What? Like a moth to the flame, you finally made it! The carrier, right on time. Buzz, turn around, run! No, 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 that is where you are wrong, little zealous fly. It is not him carrying the book. It was always the book carrying him here. Nonsense! We were always right on your tail, butcher. Oh, because you chose to, right? Adorable. But enough about that. Hand over the book, carrier. Or what? Or I constrict those electricity fields and zap your friends just like the bugs that they are. Not until you tell me what you want it for. Oh, come on. What difference does it make to you? This will all play out as it must, regardless. Let us stop wasting time. I can just read a spell and end you. We both know it does not work that way. It already worked once. Do I have to spell everything out for you? It worked once because it was written that it would. You had no say in this. The book chose the role. And now it returns to me for its final performance. You're insane. Bob Olmstein, or whatever he's calling himself. We are all just actors in his little production. Until you hand the Necronomicon over, that is. I am not anyone's spawn, Butcher. You have not caught on yet? Tough. I have no time to lay it out for you dimwits. Book! Now! You owe us an explanation! I owe you nothing. But it really is simple, little fly. You are all prisoners in Olmstein's web of fiction. While I will claw my way out of it. So what's the book for? A fine seeker you turned out to be. It is the magic wand in the illusionist's toolkit. This thing called Olmstein likes his stories. He simply set loose the magic wand into our boring world and watched it turn myth into reality. So many possible storylines he planted seeds for. The carrier, the seeker, the protector, the beast. Same roles, different actors. 
It's so much more fun when you defy all laws of nature and existence. Give me the book! I'll never give you the book. Then watch your friends here die. No, wait! You cannot stop me from reaching it. The crowning achievement of my life's work with flesh and blood and metal. Breathing life into one of Olmstein's favorite characters. The mind controlled hyper kraken. The mind controlled hyper kraken. For now. But what matters is what it shall become. Ya Cthulhu! He who dreams at the bottom of the sea, awaiting his awakening. The perfect triangle. The huge pair of wings you dug up in Foreign Maris. The first angle. Wings of the dragon. The oversized kraken you raised in Fishmouth. The second angle. Head of the Kraken. You. The third angle. Iron will of man. You're just mind controlling some poor Frankenstein creature, you psycho. Part man, part Kraken, part dragon. Made one by the Necronomicon. And now, the moon is right. Why here? Why is this place special? If the Necronomicon's really related to the moon, it must be where the book is at its most powerful right now. This is where all his possible realities converge. Where I step out from between them. The moon is right? Oh, Olmstein. Fine bunch of actors you were dealt this time. They have seen all and understood nothing. No, no, wait. Olmstein, the moon, the Necronomicon, the Kraken. I think I'm starting to understand. Are you now? Uh, I should have. Should have listened to the other parts, I guess. We'll just. Olmstein is playing evil. He wanted the monster here. What am I saying? Nothing makes sense. How about Olmstein wanted the monster here? Olmstein wanted the monster here. And why is that? Because every good story needs a monster. <laughs> because every good story needs a monster. A monster that the heroes can smite using the awesome power of the Necronomicon. There is just one little detail that is off. We're early, aren't we? Indeed. Only when the moon is full does Olmstein regain control over the Necronomicon. He set it up that way, and it is beautiful. Until then, the book is useless to you, while I... Long have I studied its wicked pages. I know how to rein its chaotic majesty in. Oh no. His eye in the sky, not yet fully open to our doings. Praise the gibbous moon. My time to strike. You played us. Not quite. The story would have gathered us all here nonetheless. Just a while later. Congratulations on overcoming all those obstacles so quickly. You should have taken your time. So Olmstein is an... Uh... Impress me. What is Olmstein? A god, you, an alien. Uh, I don't a know. A god. He must be a god. We are all messing with things that we don't understand. <laughs> Speak for yourself, little fly. I have really had enough talk now. Last warning before they die. Okay, okay. Here. Welcome back, old friend. So now what? You'll just become... C Cthulhu! Devourer of souls! An end to this wretched joke of a world! Destroy the world, that's it? 
You either haven't thought this through or you're just bad crap nuts. Negotiating terms, little fly. Yes, they're in control right now, up there in the moon. But once I stamp this world out, when just me and them are the ones left standing... What? What happens? Appreciation for a mortal that became a god. For the pawn that broke the rules and checkmated the king. I have created life before. And I will destroy and then repopulate this world the way I see fit. Omsin will never allow it. Start over from scratch, with an invincible god of death ruling over darkness? Breeding my own ruthless kind, stamping out the weak. Nothing but chaos for years and years to come? That is not his kind of story. Him and his kind will just abandon this wretched earth. Move on to the next toy and leave this one to me. Time to become Cthulhu. I don't like the looks of this. Kitty! Shh! Shut up, dummy! How do I stop those force fields? Forget those! All the underground volcanoes around this peak are rigged to explode. The detonators got to be around here somewhere. Look for that! Blow up volcanoes, awaken beast for mind control. Got it! On it! <laughs> right. There's the butcher. Cables, junk, more junk, even more junk. Cables, junk on the ground, junk on race platform. This whole place is wired. I bet it's wired to blow stuff up. Thick red cables. They run. Oops. It's impossible to tell where they all lead to. Can't do anything. I'm stuck in place. The butcher, finally in my sights, and I'm powerless. He's got a lot to answer for. Before Oops. Just come a little closer, you maniac! Now I can't reach the freak! Okay, so... I ain't getting anything. So, Don... Alright. Quickly, hook up the detonator! It dies tonight! Okay. Still a lot of junk, but on some kind of raised platform. Hard to see anything under that upside down box. Ugh, oh, this is so frustrating. I can't reach the thing. That's it! That's, it. That's the detonator! Shut up! What? No! No! The The detonator! That's it! There's the detonator! Get it! Right below you! Alright, let's hope it makes a big enough splash. Not so fast, you verbose vermin! Unless you want to fry, you are not touching that detonator. No, no, no! Feel that energy crackling in the air? I've reached the final three phases of the incantation! World, prepare to meet Cthulhu! We gotta do something! Yeah, yeah! Cthulhu fatigue! Damn it, damn it! Ah! Go come and nahum! You're in the Kasiyaha! Omsing, where are you? Taranak Shog! Taranak Sia! Yeah! Yeah! Kithulu Vatagan! Go come and nahum! You're in the Kasiyaha! Wait, am I supposed to be doing something here? Detonator or escape? It's the detonator! Our one chance to send a signal to Vlad and Serge and Barnabas. But it's engulfed in deadly electricity. <laughs> Alright, kitty. I don't know how to do it, but we need to push that button. It's our one shot. We need to push it and ring the bells. Time's running out. Go come and get him. All right, kitty. She's the only one that can move, but no, there's got to be another way. Okay, I guess. It's the one way out of here. One route back to safety. I 
think I know what I have to do. Yeah, I can't yeah. do that. I'm... All right, Kitty. Come back the way you came, Kitty. It's the only way out. I've failed you. I've dragged you along all over the place and achieved nothing. I ruined your life. I couldn't change you back. I lost the Necronomicon. And now this lunatic might turn into a god of death and destruction. You're innocent. Just run. Run as fast as you can. Now, Buzz, it isn't easy to admit this, but I've discovered some surprising things about myself since this all started. Run away? Sorry, but that's not my style. Time for... Well, no time left. Bye. Kitty, no. She was. We're all gonna miss her, buddy. It's as if time stood still for her.
Oh boy. Time to rock and roll. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. Oh wow. Ah. So there's a few more voice actors and uh but, oh boy, oh boy. What a, what a way to end. What a way to end the uh, story. And of course, the way that ended certainly spoke to having a sequel. Ah, I have no doubt that there will be a sequel now. I really hope this does well enough that it will become um, yeah I really hope this game does well enough that we end up seeing a sequel out of it what a what a really quite a wonderful wonderful adventure story and uh, really a heart-wrenching ending of course it's uh, Lovecraftian story, so it was just odd and odd and odder and odder, and that's basically what we all came here for, right? I mean, the the story is fantastic. I really enjoy the way it was written. I thought the voice acting was fantastic as well, and the animations and everything is such high quality production. To think that just three people mainly three people worked on this project to bring it to life is just mind-blowing uh. well uh, yeah it's just uh, quite a quite an amazing experience adventure all in all no regrets whatsoever about uh, running through this whole story and um, it's been a really easy game for me to play on camera because I haven't had to talk very much instead I've just been an audience to this work as most of you have been as well um, I know that uh, some places I may have skipped a little bit of uh, uh, skipped a little bit of um, uh, of the text or not fully fleshed out every single conversation I know in that garlic radio station I only allowed the first um, caller to speak uh, that was rather lengthy already so um, yeah I just I couldn't let it keep on going it was going to take way too long but there was hardly any bugs as far as I have encountered the the issues that I've had are mainly the text that's running off the screen I'm glad they introduced a patch only a few days after launch that uh, have taken away the problem uh, with uh, people not wanting to play with subtitles now you can turn them on and off in the movie video sections as well as in the in-game sections um, you know I, I I felt that the um, I felt that the locations you know in terms of specifically needing to be standing in a specific location to click on something and interact with it is the part that I didn't like the most about it but again totally don't mind uh, it one tiny bit um, so 
One thing I really like, you, know, you haven't seen this, is if you actually click on the load game, um, the game automatically saves in many different segments, but you can also go in and save at any point that you have control, and um, so you can go back in and look at any section. I don't know how many different save slots there are, but modern computing systems, you know, who cares? You know, each save game file, even if it's a little bit bigger than others, it, uh, this save files in this game are probably pretty small. I have no idea. I'm just glad that there's auto save, there's you can uh, manual save, and you can just go back and look at something again very easily. Um, again, like I said, the patch introduced subtitles and movie subtitles, so that was really very much a useful addition. You can look at the cutscenes um, now that we've seen all of them, so they're all here. What a interesting, interesting story, right? Um, then that's pretty much it. You have seen it all. And uh, as I've high, um, didn't, you know, go through all the conversations and everything, didn't go through all the different parts and get all the uh, achievements, but we got most of them. We got most of them. I think about 80%. Um, anyway, I am very much looking forward to a sequel of this if they do end up making one. I really hope they do. Again, this has been a wonderful experience, a, a joyous journey, and uh, a wonderful story to go through. Um, very, very much worth my time, and I hope you felt that it was worth your time as well. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.